والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم فل الذين ينفقون اموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبه انبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك يسبحون ويخلق ما لا تعلمون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Uh, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of our program, uh, The Universal Quran. Uh, we're still talking about the chapter of Al Insan or Surah Al Insan, and uh, we are still referring or dealing with the uh, pleasures and blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the righteous in the hereafter. We talked before about the kind of dress and garments that will be given to them, and that they will be given also a pure drink by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here uh, the verse number 22 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in hadha kana lakum jaza'an wa kana sa'ikum mashkura indeed this is your reward and your endeavor uh, has been recognized and accepted so uh, here this is the place of getting something like payment or something like reward so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will never fail to get a reward for anything you have done and he uh, give you full recognition of all your deeds sometimes in our life for example you might do a project and after that the manager would say to you the project is bad it's not the one I was thinking about or it's not the one that will bring uh, a lot of benefits to the company for example or you might do a dissertation like uh, an MA for example or a PhD and then you give it to your supervisor and then the supervisor would say, no, you need to rewrite it again because the idea is not good or you are not, uh, for example, uh, stuck to the point or you are quite far away from the main theme or the main subject of your thesis. So you have done an effort and you have exerted an effort and you have uh, uh, spent a lot of time trying to get something and then your uh, attempts have failed and your, for example, project hasn't been recognized by your, your supervisor, your company, your manager. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never lose anything and you will never miss anything. Just do something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a full reward for that. As we memorize and all of us know the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ, he says, the one who reads just one letter of the Quran will be given a reward. I wouldn't say that alif, lam, meme, harf, but alif uh, is one harf for which you will get a reward, and lam is another harf for which you will get another reward, and meme is another harf for which you will get a reward. So, uh, anything, if even something little, the Prophet uh, said in the sound hadith, don't think little of uh, the meaning of the hadith. لا تحقرنا من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طلق. Don't think that something. Uh, a little might not be recognized and you will not get a reward even if you would meet your brother while you are smiling in his face with a cheerful face this is something which is we might think that it is little but by uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will get a great reward for that and Allah uh, as we mentioned the hadith before uh, a man he was thirsty and he found a dog and then he said that the situation there are two narrations of this hadith one of which says that uh, she was a woman and another narration uh, says that it was uh, a man anyway. So he found the dog and he said that the dog is suffering from the same th thing I was suffering from and he uh, uh, gave water to the dog and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thanked his deed, his endeavor was uh, thanked and was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you might do something for your brother and for example help him uh, if he is going, for example, to move out, you need to, uh, for example, give him a hand. You might help him with your car. You might help him, for example, rearranging his items and uh, put things on the shelves. And you will never lose any of the rewards. Don't say, I'm busy. Uh, it's not the time, for example, to help people because, unfortunately, many people nowadays are selfish. 
they don't think about each other and they always they think about me, 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 I have to care for myself, I have to uh, look after my children, I have to use every minute, but they don't, don't think about making things for their brothers. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, The one who doesn't care about other Muslims, he is not a real Muslim. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in the help or will be helpful to the one who helps his brother. We have another hadith, authentic hadith, that a man uh, was going to visit his brother. And then an angel came to him and he said to him, why should you have left your home? He said, I have left my home to visit my brother in Islam. The, king, uh, uh, the angel, sorry, the angel said to him again, uh, and there is no other purpose. You are not going, for example, to make a bargain with him, to talk about trade, to talk about business, to do something like that. He said, no, I have just left my home mainly to visit my brother. Uh, the angel asked him again, uh, there is nothing uh, like, uh, as I said, like uh, business or anything. He said, no, I mainly uh, did that to visit him. And the angel said to him also, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive your sins and forgive the sins of your brother. Uh, there is another hadith also in which the Prophet ﷺ is saying, uh, if one of you would go for his brother's need to help him do something like that, it's better than praying additional prayer in my own mosque. So, uh, Al Imam, I think it was Hassan al Basri, he said that uh, to walk or to help your brother is better than praying uh, hundreds of additional rak'at or something like that. So, uh, we are in need uh, for such things to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make our sa'i, as he says here, وَكَانَ سَعِيكُمْ مَشْكُورًا and your endeavor is accepted and uh, recognized uh, uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates your deeds and your deeds will never uh, be spoiled by, by, by him because you have done something mainly for him with sincerity. This is the most important thing and we need to focus on this issue because many people, they pray, they'll go, uh, some of them go for Hajj to get the title of Hajj or as some brothers in, 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 uh, in Europe, they say Hajji. Anyway, if you are doing that mainly to get the title, the approval, the, uh, the praise by people, then you will have nothing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, after that, the Quran moves to talk about uh, another verse and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرَانَ تَنْزِيلًا It is we, we have sent down the Qur'an uh, by stages. So the Qur'an, we know that uh, the period in which the Qur'an was revealed in total is about 23 years, uh, uh, about 10 years in Mecca and 13 years in Medina. And of course, there is a kind of purpose behind revealing the Qur'an in different stages and uh, all these long years. It was... And it is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send the Qur'an in just a single day, for example. But that should be very difficult to the people. And because the, the Islamic obligations, in a way, are so many. And the Qur'an, for example, when it was revealed, it was revealed to legalize something or to say that something, for example, is prohibited. An example is the issue of uh, the prohibition of wine. The first verse that was revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنَ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْثِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ الْنَاسِ They will ask you about wine and uh, say to them that in wine there is a kind of benefit but there is a kind of sin as, as well and that the sin is greater than the benefit. And then after that, uh, this is the first step to prohibit wine. And the second step is, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقْرَبُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَرَى O you who believe, don't come to a prayer while you are drunk. So this is the second stage. And after that, the last or the final stage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسَرُ وَالْأَنْسَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسُ وَالْنَعْمَ الشَّيْطَانِ فَيْتَنِبُهُ Indeed, khamr or wine is a kind of uh, trick or game or one of the acts of the shaitan of the devil. So avoid it in order you will be prosperous and uh, successful. So, uh, and, and the Quran uh, the disbelievers or the uh, kuffar of Quraysh, they said, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Furqan, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةَ الْمَحَجَةَ They said, the disbelievers said, will the Quran be revealed to him only in one single volume, in one time? But 
that should have been very difficult to the people because, and again, there is a very important issue that we need to tackle here, which is the issue of da'wah. How can you invite people to Islam? How can you, uh, for example, a disbeliever or uh, somebody who has never heard about Islam, we need to use the same methodology uh, by which the Quran was revealed, for example. Uh, now we have a new Muslim convert, okay? You can't say to him, okay, brother, or okay, sister, come on. Islam is composed of so and so and so. You need to, uh, for example, perform the five uh, obligatory uh, pillars, like shahada, prayer, go for hajj, pay zakah, and fast the month of Ramadan, and then you should completely uh, avoid usury, avoid riba, avoid... That should be very difficult. And he will never, or she will never be able to uh, bear all these charges and all these duties. But Islam, in the issue of Islam, you need to tell people gradually, step by step, okay? Because, uh, for example, somebody is completely moving from one life to another life, to a new one. So in order to cope or to be familiar with the new life, you need to go with him or with her gradually, step by step until he can grasp the meaning of Islam and until he can understand the instructions of Islam. Once he is about, for example, to accept the instructions, first thing, you say to him, okay, brother, akhi, the first thing you do, if you want to convert to Islam, you make, for example, ritual bathing or you take a shower as the Prophet ﷺ did before. This is the first thing, okay, and then uh, 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 you start to pray because I saw many examples and people uh, made it very difficult to new Muslim converts. They say to them, okay, you must learn Arabic. This is not uh, necessary. Learning Arabic would come later. If he is unable, for example, to learn Arabic, you can write, for example, Al-Fatiha in Latin figures, like, for example, Alhamdu, A-L-H, and so on, until he memorizes it very well, and then he can. If it's difficult for him to learn Arabic, there's no problem. Because one of the Imams of Fiqh, I think it's Imam Ahmad ibn Hamad or Imam Abu Hanifa, said even uh, uh, if he is unable to learn Arabic, he can read just Al-Fatiha in Arabic, and that should be okay. Okay, so we need to make things easy and simple for people. Because Islam itself is a simple religion, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعَلَ لَكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجًا He said, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرَى وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make things easy for you. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, in the deen yusr. So Islam is something easy. Islam is not something complicated and is not something difficult. We don't want people to shun or to be away from Islam because we give them many instructions and uh, many laws. They can't do all of these things in one time. But you need to be patient uh, in, in the matter of da'wah. You might not have results at the same time, but the result, inshallah, will come later. You shouldn't say, okay, I spent 10 years, 20 years in the matter of da'wah and nobody converted to Islam. You did your best. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Insan, إِنَّ هَذَا كَانَ لَكُمْ جَزَاءً وَكَانَ سَعَيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا Your endeavor is accepted and recognized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Welcome to this new episode of Focus Point. The new generation is has the good the habit of reading more than before. Jewish question was named basically the problem of Jews who lost their function in society. <laughs> They ask you about uh, months, they ask you about uh, many questions were uh, directed to the Prophet ﷺ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to say to them so and so. So the Quran, some verses were revealed as I just stated to uh, respond or to answer a question. And uh, another issue here, uh, so uh, the meaning here that the Quran was revealed in, in different stages, uh, some parts in, in Mecca, as we stated before, 
to tackle issues of monotheism and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in Medina about punishments and about uh, other Islamic duties. Uh, what we need to do here is uh, to give the Quran a kind of importance and a kind of focus. It's not just you put it in home or you put it in a place and you neglect it. No, you read the Quran thoroughly and you uh, need to ponder over each verse because each verse has got a kind of secret. And each verse has got a kind of significance. But it's only uh, arrested with the person himself. Because, subhanAllah, the Quran is, is the only book that whenever you read it, you uh, would say that you have read it for the first time. You, uh, myself, I read it many times, but uh, each time I read it, it's exactly as if this is the first time I have a look at the Quran. If you have, for example, uh, some uh, stories like... Uh, uh, or about a newspaper, magazine, something like science, science fiction. You read it one time, and then just second day, you throw it away because it's done. You, you, you read it, and, uh, and that's it. But subhanAllah, the Quran, it's something like a, a continuous reward. You get it. When you read the Quran for each letter, as, as the Hadith says, you get a reward. What about reading the whole Quran? What about reading 30 chapters? And here in the month of Ramadan, this is the month of the Quran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Shahr Ramadan, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. So this is Muslims has Muslims have no other constitution except the Quran. If you lose anything, if you have any consultation, you have a question, you have an issue, you feel, for example, not stable. You don't feel comfort. You need just to make wudu and read some parts of the Quran and then. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah uh, uh, Al-Isra, وَنُنَزِّلْ مِنْ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So parts of the Quran uh, are a kind of remedy or are a, are a kind of treatment for those who uh, suffer, uh, of, uh, suffer from many things. So you can use the Quran as cure, as treatment for different diseases that might inflict the heart as uh, scholars uh, say. Uh, so, so the Quran of course was revealed to the Prophet Another issue that we have to clear the minds of some ignorant people Especially some uh, unfair orientalists And they say, for example, the Quran is the product of Muhammad uh, Some of them also, they call Muslims Muhammadans We have to reject and we have to oppose this definition at all We should not accept it as Muslims we should never use the word Muhammadans or Muhammadanism because they say that uh, uh, Islam is the product of Muhammad Sallallahu Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has nothing to do with this religion. The Quran is a product of him, and Islam is the, the, the pure product of Prophet Muhammad. And people are Muhammadans because they followed Muhammad. And they uh, uh, some others are very very extremists, and they say that Muslims are worshiping Muhammad. We have to clear the minds and we have to refute all these claims and we say that Prophet ﷺ just carried the Quran. The Quran was revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our great Prophet Muhammad Sallam and then the Prophet delivered the message because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says to him فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغِ Your job is just to inform people فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ and uh, you are just to remind people of the hereafter and of, of uh, the punishment of the Quran and so on. And uh, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in huwa illa wahyun yuha. So the Prophet is uh, uh, a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Revelation was, uh, uh, sorry, came to him and he was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to convey, to deliver the message to people. As Muslims, each one of us, is you could, you could say a bearer of the Islamic message. Your duty, my duty, the duty of all Muslims is try to ask people to accept Islam, to do your best to convert even one person. If you are able to do that because uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَن يَهْدِ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنْ حَمْرُ النِّعَمْ أَوْ خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide one single person because of your efforts, because of your deed, that deeds that should be better than uh, the whole uh, dunya. It's very easy to refute this claim by many ways. First of all, if the Quran was the product of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, first of all, he should have dedicated a big surah for him. But the uh, chapter of Muhammad is very short compared to the stories of about Prophet Moses Alaihi uh, Prophet Musa, uh, there is a big uh, section about his life 
since he uh, came to this life and then after that when he became a prophet in the chapter of Al-Qasas. And then the same uh, or similar story was repeated in the chapter of Ash'ara, the poet. And then small part was repeated in the chapter of An-Naml or the ends. Another part was repeated in the chapter of Al-Araf. A big part was repeated in the chapter of Al-Baqarah or the Kaab about Sayyidina Musa and his story with the Jew, children of Israel and so on. So maybe if that was his own product, he should have dedicated the biggest surah like the chapter of Al-Baqarah and he should have called it, for example, Muhammad. If it was his own product, why should we have surahs or a surah like, for example, the chapter of Maryam? Why shouldn't we have a chapter of Khadija radiallahu anha wardaha? or a chapter of uh, Amina, for example, his mother, or why should we have a chapter of uh, Ibrahim and Hud and Yunus, why should we have a chapter of his rightly guided caliphs like Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Uthman, and so on. And another thing also that the Prophet can never uh, compose or make the Quran, it's only very simple because he didn't write and read as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabut, وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَلَا تَخُطُّوا بِيَمِينِكَ So the Prophet, uh, uh, the miraculous thing about him that he didn't write and read and then uh, the greatest book like the Quran was revealed to him. So we have to be cautious about these uh, claims and about these attempts that some uh, uh, wicked people or mischievous people are trying to cast some doubts in the hearts of Muslims. And unfortunately, some Muslims sometimes they might be tempted by such claims and they might believe them but you have to block the way of that as some scholars for example they said if you have a book which might shake in your belief as a Muslim you should never read that book uh, read the book always read the classical books and books of fiqh and books of tafsir and so on because they will increase your faith and they will make your faith firm but if a book for example is going to shake your aqidah you should avoid and you should discard this book completely and you should ignore it completely. We should be quite sure about the authenticity of the Quran and about the authenticity of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, traditions or hadith. We should have no doubt because the Quran was uh, uh, collected by great companions like Sayyidina Zayd ibn Thabit, uh, like uh, Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Uthman. So we have no doubt about that. And another thing that uh, makes us sure about the authenticity of the Qur'an and none of its verses, for example, was missed, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in chapter of Al-Hajr, إِنَّا نَحْنَ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَى وَإِنَّا لَهُ الْحَافِذُونَ Indeed, we have revealed the Qur'an and we are eligible, we are quite able to uh, protect the Qur'an against any kind of distortion and against any kind of corruption. It's not like some other books which, reve- which, were, reve- which were revealed, and these books, for example, suffered some distortion and some fabrication and some uh, false news or false reports. The Quran is completely against all these things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his promise to uh, uh, preserve and to protect his book against any change. Uh, so when we read such uh, books, we have to be sure and to be careful about that. At the end, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to uh, uh, make this month blessed for all the Muslim Ummah. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وكل في فلك يسبحون